guys, welcome back to Lingaroo, where language comes to life. Um, if you missed our first introductory video, my name is Jen. I'm a speech pathologist or a speech therapist. I've created this channel so that I can come alongside you, equip you and help you to, to stimulate language in your child um, within the context of your everyday routine. Whatever it is that you find yourself doing, there's language to be found, right? Where language comes to life. So we're gonna dive right in today. Uh, we're going to be talking about language stimulation techniques. A little disclaimer, these are not uh, unique to me. I didn't create these. These are um, just some basic strategies that have been around for years. If you Google language stimulation or language development, you've probably already encountered these at some point. Uh, but I want to tell you more about kind of my take on it, right? And, and how we can kind of change our thinking. Again, think outside the box. And, and think about ways that we can take these strategies and incorporate them into everyday life. So the first one, this is my favorite. I'll tell you why. Um, I'm a talker. I don't know if you've already guessed that in the, the couple minutes that you've known me. Um, but I love to talk. I could talk to anyone, any, anything, anytime. Talk to, I've, my husband says I've never met a stranger, right? I, I just, I talk. I talk to myself a lot. I've told him some of the best conversations I have are with myself. I know it's kind of crazy. You're probably ready to, to find a new YouTube channel after that. But um, I, I love to talk. And, and when I had my littles at the, in the home, um, this was one of the things that came most naturally to me. Um, and I get that it might not come naturally for you, right? Maybe you're a little bit more introverted. Maybe you would just rather not talk. Or maybe you were in a room of people and, and you might not say a word the whole time. I get that too. Um, and I do think that the more we practice this strategy in the, in the comfort of your own home, the, the easier it's going to get and the more natural it will become, I promise. This strategy that I'm talking about is called self-talk. It's where you talk about what you're doing as you're doing it. So if you are cooking dinner, you are stirring, you are, oh, I need, a, I need another pan. Where's my pan? Oh, here it is. It's way up high. I'm going to take it down, right? And, and your kiddo is watching this. Your kiddo is sitting there on the, on the front row watching your actions, hearing your language, and slowly but surely is starting to map the two together. Right, as you reach for the pan, he's like, oh, pan, okay. As you bring it down, oh, down, that, that must be this way, right? So he or she is, is making these connections to the world around them, to the, to the verbal world around them, simply by listening to you talk and watching you. I remember um, there was a movie a while back that came out. It was, I think it was, It's a Beautiful Life, or no, 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 Life is Beautiful, Life is Beautiful, that's what it was. And, and it was a movie that was all in Italian. Right? I don't speak Italian. I, I spoke some Spanish, but I, it was an Italian movie with English subtitles. And I kid you not, <laughs> like, I don't want to be crazy, but by the end of the movie, I felt like I could understand Italian. Right? Like, yeah, it was still kind of dependent on the, on the subtitles, but the more I watched and the more I listened, I started to, to pick up on the nuances of the language that I'd never, ha I'd never been instructed on in Italian. So it can happen, right? As you guys are, are talking about what you're doing as you're doing it, you're creating that monologue. You're creating those, those subtitles for your kiddo as they're watching your actions. So self-talk. The next strategy we're gonna talk about is parallel talk. This is where your child is in an activity. Again, it doesn't have to be something super orchestrated. It could be eating, mealtime, right? Bath time, whatever it is that you're already doing. You're going to talk about what your child is doing as he or she is doing it. So again, parallel, coming alongside. You're just coming alongside and watching what they're doing, watching their activity, and you're providing, again, those subtitles. You're providing the language that's being mapped onto their activities. The third strategy is called expansions. So this is as your child starts to create language, you're going to affirm that by expanding the utterance to a longer sentence. Now here's again kind of where I differ on this. Most of the time when we think about expansions, we think we got to kind of wait around till maybe the first words start coming in. I disagree. I disagree. When your kiddo starts making noises, any noises, I think we need to be assigning meaning 
and expanding the language and modeling that language right then and there. Let me give you an example. When a, when a kiddo is, is maybe even an infant, three to six months, and they start crying, and you know they're crying time-wise, watch-wise, you know they're crying because they're hungry. You can start modeling that language. Oh, I hear you, you're crying. I, oh, you're hungry, I understand. Okay, let's go eat, let's get some food, right? As you start to introduce the food, you're talking about you know, when they want more, they make a sound. You can expand that utterance. Oh, tell mama, tell, yes, you want more? Okay, let's, let's give you some more. Here it comes. Whatever the sound is, you want to start as early as we can teaching them that, that language has meaning, right? And that, and that the verbal productions they're doing means something in the world around them. It means something to you, and it means something for them. And we need to, as early as we can, start teaching them that. And then as we get into first words, if they say car, you expand it. Yeah, you have the blue car. Oh, I bet it's so fast, right? Just a little bit more. Whatever they're doing, if they have two words, more crackers, okay? Oh, you want some more crackers? Okay, tell mommy, I need more. I need more crackers. Whatever the utterance is, you're going to expand it. You're going to up the ante and take it just a little bit further. Okay, so we've talked about self-talk. I'm talking about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. We've talked about parallel talk. That's when your kiddo is doing something and you're talking about what they're doing as they're doing it. And we've talked about expansions. Wherever they start, whatever sounds come out of their mouth, you're going to affirm it and you're going to expand it into a longer utterance. So again, you've heard the word affirmative now a couple times, right? Um, I keep saying in an affirmative way, in a positive way. I, I want you guys to think about how we learn, right, as adults. How, how do we learn or, or what, what context is, is conducive or, or encouraging for us to learn, right? If we're in a class, heaven forbid, I, I know I took, a, I took a German language class and I was, you know, older at the time and about put me over the edge because uh, I was so not used to being back in school. But, you know, what was encouraging about that environment? The, the, the professor or the teacher was, was positive, he was encouraging, he was smiling, he was engaging, right? If he had stood up at the front of the class and was like, nine, no, you know, I, I probably would have shut down. I probably wouldn't have enjoyed the class and I probably wouldn't have learned nearly as much as I did. So think about that as you're doing these strategies. Keep it fun. Keep it engaging and, and, and keep it on a level that's, that's affirmative, that continues to draw your child in. Um, again, when you say no, say it like this. Most kids are gonna shut down, I probably would, right? So think about that, think about your language. Um, the other thing again, making it fun, making it engaging, um, in putting it around things that are motivational, right? If they're hungry, that's one of the best times well, not too hungry, but if they're a little hungry, that's one of the best times to incorporate some of these strategies. So again, going back to that introductory video, my, my goal is not to make you a speech therapist. My goal is not to give you one more thing to do or one more thing to worry about. My goal is truly that you will just be equipped and encouraged and empowered to bring some of these things into the activities that you're already doing. If you know somebody who has a little one or maybe a little one on the way, go ahead and share this video with them. Um, they're not going to want to miss this content either. So put your comments and questions down below. I'll be looking through those and responding as I can and then also taking information and ideas for future videos. So guys, again, thanks for joining us. I look forward to having you here next time on Lingaroo, where language comes to life.